Thank you very much, Chair. You are now live. Right, thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to South Cam's District Council Planning Committee. Um, before we get into my notes, I should just alert everybody, members of the committee and uh, members of the public, that I will be bringing forward the second item to be dealt with first. That's the Falmia application as we have a request for a deferral and we will deal with that um, as the first substantive item. I'll explain why when we get to that point. So uh, I'm Councillor John Batchelor and I'm chair of the committee. Councillor Halings is vice chair. Uh, Councillor Halings, if you would like to confirm that you're with us, please. Yes, morning chair. I'm here, Councillor Halings, vice chair. Thank you. Um, we're supported along the virtual top table today uh, by the following officers. Chris Carter, Delivery Manager of Strategic Sites. Uh, could you confirm you're with us, Mr Carter? Yes, good morning, Chair. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Um, Stephen Reed, Senior Planning Lawyer. Could you confirm? Uh, morning, with? Chair of the Committee. Thank you. And Ian Senior, Democratic Services Officer, taking the minutes today. Uh, Mr. Good morning, Senior. Yeah. Good morning. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, I'll introduce individual case officers uh, when I invite them to speak. First, just a few housekeeping announcements. Please make sure that your device is fully charged and switch your camera and microphones off unless you're invited to do otherwise. Uh, when you are invited to address the meeting, please make sure that your microphone is switched on. When you finish addressing the meeting, please turn off your microphone and camera immediately. Speak slowly and clearly and please do not talk over or interrupt anyone. Please ensure that you have switched off or silenced any other devices you have so that they do not interrupt proceedings. The normal procedure at planning committee is to take recorded votes and uh, we will continue with this unless there is clear affirmation. When we move to a vote on any item and there is not clear affirmation, I will ask for a roll call to be taken. I will then ask committee members to speak into the microphone so that their vote is clear both to committee and to those watching the webcast. Members should respond for, against or abstain when their name is called. Committee members present, I will now invite each of you to introduce yourselves. Members, after I call your name, please turn on your camera and microphone. Wait two seconds and say your name and the ward you represent so that your presence may be noted. Please remember to turn your cameras off after your introduction. That's with your microphone. Uh, my name is John Batchelor. I'm committee chair and one of the members for Linton. Uh, Councillor Anna Bradham, please introduce yourself. Apologise for the noise this off, Chairman. Um, good morning. I'm Councillor Anna Bradnam and I'm a member for Milton and Waterbeach. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Khan. Hello, good morning. I'm Councillor Martin Khan and I'm one of the members for Histon in Beacon and Orchard Park. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Fain. Good morning, Peter Fain representing Shelford Ward. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dr Hawkins. Good morning, everyone. I'm um, Tumi Hawkins. I represent Codicott Ward. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Halings. Morning, everybody. Councillor Pippa Halings representing Histon, Impington and Orchard Park. Uh, Councillor Ripeth is not with us this morning. Uh, Councillor Roberts, please. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, everybody. Deborah Roberts, District Councillor for the Foxton Ward. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Heather Williams, please. Morning, Heather Williams. I represent the Mordens Ward. All right, thank you. 
Councillor Dr Richard Williams. Good morning, thank you Chair. I am the member for Whittlesford, Triplo, Heathfield and Newton. Good, thank you. And Councillor Wright. Good morning, Councillor Nick Wright, Caxton and Patworth. Good, thank you very much. So I can confirm that the meeting is quiet. Uh, if at any time a member leaves the meeting, would they please make that fact known to me uh, so that it can be recorded in the minutes? So members of the public are aware if a councillor is absent for any part of the presentation or debate about an agenda item, then they may not vote on that item. We have se several public speakers today and I would just like to explain uh, how public speaking will work. This meeting is being broadcast live via the council's website and public speakers are reminded that by participating in this meeting, you are consenting to being broadcast and to the use of the images and sound recordings for webcasts and training purposes. Um, when you come to speak, you will have three minutes to address the committee. When you start speaking, we will start the timer. Please ensure you switch your microphone on before you speak. When your time has elapsed, we will ask you to conclude your speech. Once you have finished speaking, we may wish to ask questions. Please be concise in your responses. If there are no more questions, you may leave the meeting and continue to watch via the webcast. Committee members are reminded that any questions to speakers should be for clarification purposes only. And the process for this shall be as follows. I shall ask if there are any questions. If you do have questions, please ask to speak via the chat function. The committee can only consider planning reasons for or against the application. The committee cannot consider general observations about the development site. The committee cannot consider comments from public speakers made outside of their allotted speaking time. Therefore, I request that those registered do not interrupt outside of their own time. Once the committee has heard from all speakers and planning officers, we will form views on the application. The planning committee will then vote. The outcome is decided by majority vote. And in the event of a tie, I as chair have casting vote. When planning committee members vote, please can they ensure that they identify themselves and speak into the microphone so that the vote is understood by committee and those watching the webcast. Members are reminded that they should indicate whether they are for, against or abstain when their name is called. Thank you very much. So that's the uh, introduction. I will now uh, move to the agenda and ask if we have any apologies. Uh, Mr Senior, please. Thank you, Chair. Just the one apology then from Councillor Judith Rickman. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we will go to item three, which is declarations of interest. Does anyone have any declarations of interest? Chairman. Uh, yes, uh, Councillor Roberts. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, I am a member of Fowmere Parish Council who have obviously put input into it. I come to it afresh. Though um, obviously I, I will be um, explaining why we have nobody um, on this morning now. Thank you. Right. Um, just as a formality, I, I think all of us who are present at the, at the last uh, committee meeting where we uh, initially dealt with that one would also be um, um, uh, declaring uh, a non pecuniary interest in it um, and we if we actually decide to actually hear it today then we would all be um, 
coming afresh. That, that it applies to all members of the committee except for Councillor Halings, who was not present at the last one. Uh, for the benefit of the minutes, um, that is a general declaration. Chair. Uh, do we have any more? Yes, Councillor Toomey Hawkins. Yep, Councillor Hawkins, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I uh, declare an interest in the uh, Bourne former guest stamp factory. I have been at meetings where it was discussed and um, I come to this afresh. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Uh, no other declarations? No, uh, Chair. Okay. Oh, yes, Councillor Nick Wright. Nick Wright. Councillor Wright. Thanks, Chairman. Uh, I have a non-pecuniary interest in that. I know the farming family that own Bourne Airfield, but I don't know if they're connected to this. They're not the applicants. As, for, I don't recognise them as the applicants, but Bourne Airfield is mentioned a lot, and I know the farming family as friends. So, Thanks very much. Well. It's noted. OK, now on item four minutes of the previous meeting. This is the meeting held on the 11th of November, and we can be found in packages one to six uh, in our minutes. So members, any points of accuracy you wish to correct? Councillor Heather Williams. Uh, Councillor Williams, please. Thank you, Chairman. It's just on page six under enforcement report. Um, I, I did raise concern as to the year to date figures, the amounts received in close being being out of kilter from previous years. Um, and I and I definitely did say it because I had a lovely follow up from enforcement <laughs> who contacted me. So um, I'm just if we could get that included in the minutes, please, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Senior has noted that. Anything else on that? No, Chair. Right. OK, members, are you happy that I sign this as a true record of the meeting on Wednesday, the 11th of November? 20? Agreed. No one against? No, OK, good. Yeah, I'll just abstain, seeing as I was absent. Yes, fine. Noted. Right, we now move to the um, substance of the day. Um, I'm going to bring forward item six uh, first. Um, as we have a request for deferral, I have a statement um, from officers which I will now read. So first of all, I'd uh, clarify what we're talking about. If we go to Page 43, so it's item six. This is at Falmere, Cherry Tree, uh, Field, Shepherd Road, Falmere. So the statement from officers reads, since the committee report was written, letters have been received from solicitors acting on behalf of the parish council in respect of the fallback position namely the previous class Q for two dwellings that was agreed by the council. Members will recall that this issue was central to the acceptability of the application. In response to these letters, the applicant solicitor has submitted responses that are directly opposed to the view of the parish's legal advisor. It is considered that the detailed legal points that are being made in this correspondence require further consideration to enable members to make a robust, a robust informed decision. It is therefore recommended that the application be deferred to the January committee to allow officers to provide members with a report that has properly considered the new points that have been made. So given that, um, statement from officers. I am proposing that uh, we defer this item to the um, to the next convenient meeting. Do I have a seconder for that? Oh. I have a seconder from the vice chair, Councillor Hayley. 
two requests to speak from Councillor Heather Williams and Councillor Roberts. Right, fine. OK, Councillor Heather Williams, please. So we're now debate, debating the deferral. Yeah. Yes, on the deferral, um, I, I understand the reasons that have been put forward for deferral. Um, I'm just concerned by in the report, it says the decision is, was due by the 13th of November. Um, so I would, I, I think it's quite right, because I, I must admit I'm slightly confused as well with the recommendation that the fallback position isn't to be relied on either. Um, and these errors that have happened, it is concerning and does need to be looked at and all the evidence given. But are we are we putting anybody at risk of um, losing on non-determination of this of this application? Because um, it feels like if there is, it, it's, it's our fault if there is. Thank you very much. Councillor Williams, I'll take advice on that. Uh, Mr Carter, could you advise us, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, there is a theoretical risk of an appeal against non-determination. However, I know that the applicant um, is looking to try and resolve the matter through the committee process um, in discussion with the council. Uh, the detailed correspondence that's been received both from uh, representatives of the parish council and from the applicant uh, does need to be considered carefully before uh, the committee is given further advice beyond the report that currently sits in front of you. So um, yes, Councillor Williams, there is that theoretical risk, but um, in my opinion, it is unlikely that, that an appeal against non-determination would be submitted uh, given given the circumstances of this particular case. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Mr Carter. Uh, Councillor Roberts, please. Um, thank you very much, Chairman, and thank you to the officers who um, have put this proposal forward. Um, the Parish Council have taken on a legal, consult, uh, a legal planning consultant in the shape of Mr Philip Kratz. Um, Mr Kratz was due to um, speak uh, on behalf of the Parish Council this morning and the Chairman of the Parish Council and the Chairman of the Planning Committee were also going to be um, listening into the debate. We all got a, an email yesterday afternoon um, informing us that actually it was going to be deferred. It wasn't a question of maybe, that it was going to be deferred and would hopefully be coming back in January. Um, and the uh, planning committee chairman of uh, the parish council replied to that, thanked uh, the officer for informing him that that was the case. And uh, Mr Kratz was contacted and has been stood down. So, um, you know, ready for hopefully January. So it is a case now that um, uh, the parish council's representative is not available, neither of the parish council, because they were told it was definitely going to be deferred. Thank you very much. Chair, you're on mute. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, you're quite right, uh, Councillor Roberts. Um, the Certainly the recommendation is to defer it, but the process is that the only people who can defer it is uh, you, the committee. So Thank that's you, what Chairman. I'm Understood. I'll come back. Chair, we have Councillor Thane and Councillor Richard Williams. Thank you very much. Councillor Thane, please. Thank you, Chair. It is clear that our agreement to a deferral was uh, taken for granted. Uh, we defer far too many applications. We spend far too much time reconsidering applications which have been considered before. There were some simple legal issues in this case, which in my view there was plenty of time to sort out before this meeting. You're on mute, uh, on mute uh, Councillor Fain. I don't know how much of you heard that you heard because I was... We heard most of it, it's only heard. the last minute. So just to conclude, because of the assurances that have been given to the Parish Council in this case, I will go with the, the flow as it were and vote for a deferral, but I do not intend to, um, do not normally regard that as acceptable to keep deferring cases beyond the due determination date and we must stop doing so as a committee. Right, thank you very much, Mr Councillor Payne. I'm sure that's noted. Uh, Councillor Richard Williams, please. 
Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I was actually going to start by making a very similar point to Councillor Fain. Um, I, I agree wholeheartedly with what, what Councillor Fain um, has said, but given what Councillor Roberts has said, I don't really think we, we, we've got much choice now, but, but really that shouldn't happen, um, that um, people parties involved shouldn't be told it's going to be deferred, they should be told it's going to be a proposal. But I, I was going to ask a more substantive question, um, which is about the nature of the legal dispute, because uh, could I just have some clarity as to whether the dispute is now about the potential for Class Q permitted development rights to be a fallback? Because it's clear that there are no existing Class Q um, rights um, from the 2018 application. So that matter has been dealt with. So um, the, the only reason for deferral would be if there is now a dispute about the potential um, for, for a fallback position on Class Q. Otherwise, there's no reason to defer. But as I say, I think now, given what Councillor Roberts has said, we've probably got no choice. OK, well, I'll take advice on that then. Uh, Mr Carter, do you have a view? Thank you, Chair. Uh, the case officer is with us, I believe, uh, David Norris, but um, the nature of the dispute um, relates both to the uh, whether there is an existing Class Q that's still being disputed between the parties um, and also whether or not there may be a future Class Q fallback position as well. So uh, that's a position that's changed since the published report. Um, due to the representations on behalf of the applicant. But um, Mr Norris, if he's with us, may be able to advise uh, more comprehensively on that point if required. Right. Mr Norris, did you want to add to that? Yes, um, thank you, Chair. Um, because of what Mr Carter said, yes, that, that's very much it. There is no agreement between the parties that there is an existing Class Q consent. The legitimacy of the Class Q consent is in question as to whether the condition that was put on it erroneously does, does nullify that consent. There's no clarity on that at the moment, and that really is a substantive point which needs to be considered properly by solicitors. Ch okay. Chair, can I just okay. say one You'd thing? Like to come back, yeah. yeah, thank you. I mean, just on, on this, the, the, the future of Class Q, right? I mean, I think it's important the next time we look at this, the key question is whether there's a reasonable prospect of a fallback position, a reasonable prospect of Class Q rights. So. Um, I mean, that's a matter of planning judgment and a matter of fact for the committee to determine. So um, we need, you know, the evidence, but but it, it's not actually a legal matter um, about the future class queue, whether it's reasonable prospect. That's for us. So I, I hope we're not going to be too tied up in a debate about looking for an answer when actually it's a matter of planning judgment. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you very much for that. Uh, Councillor yeah, Heather, Heather Williams. Sorry? Uh, Councillor Heather Williams. Councillor Williams, you want to come back, please? Yes, please, Chairman, just based on, on the debate as it's gone. Um, I I will completely support a deferral on this application, as others have cited, but I'm very concerned about the approach that's been taken and the, the fact that people that were due to speak today have been told it will be deferred. I mean, that's predetermining a decision of this committee, which we're always warned, warned against. I mean, what would have happened if we had decided not to defer? As you say, it's only within the gift of this committee to make that decision. And I'm afraid time and time again, we're seeing too many of, of, of these sorts of things happening on consultations and procedural matters. And I'm very concerned that this could have been, either we could have completely let down a parish today, um, or we could have potentially done something that would mean it would come back through the courts. So very concerned at the approach that's been taken and I think it's important that we as a committee record that this must not happen again and we must not be blackmailed into deferrals as it feels in this case. All right thank you very much. Any further comments? Can I just say that um, and I'm sure that I'm Council sure that Council, thank you Chairman I'm sure that Councillor Williams isn't meaning um, that at, at the Parish Council um, the parish council Absolutely. is um, is yeah, one at a time, please. Uh, yeah, the parish council is is obviously uh, very concerned about what happened in November, uh, and then realised um, that the um, information that we were uh, given about the um, the previous approvals um, actually was very questionable. Well, more than questionable, um, and that's why it was brought back. Um, I I would have preferred, and I had a, a very um, decent conversation with um, Mr Kelly and Mr Norris only a couple of nights ago about all this, 
Um, and I would have preferred if, if it could have uh, waited and not come on today, but came on in January, but it is as it is. But, um, it, you know, there are serious, serious differences of opinion um, by the legal um, teams here. Um, and it's imperative that we actually hear those. And I think what I need to ask Mr. Kelly, uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Carter or Mr. Norris to do is, is make sure that the um, two uh, documents that have come in from the different lawyers are actually put in full as well, um, maybe sent out to members as soon as possible. So you can actually read the arguments that are being put by the two legal people. Um, so you've got f further information when hopefully this will come back in in January. Thank you very much, Chairman. Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Roberts. So Chair, is that myself and then Councillor Heather Williams again would like to come back. Certainly, shall I deal with Councillor Williams, who I'm sure wants to comment on uh, um, Councillor Roberts's point there. Councillor Williams, please. Thank you. Absolutely not uh, anything at the parish at all. The parish, I, I say it's important that we hear from them. My concern is the communication that's happened from this council to the parish, which has forced us into a position today because this, this council, the district council, has told the parish council that it will be deferred. And my frustration is that this is coming forward as to mistakes made by this council. And now, we're in a position where it has been assumed that as councillors of this council, we will vote in a certain way. And I feel it is not for others to assume a vote, but absolutely the parish okay, council yeah, I think, I think needs to be heard. Okay, I think have made that three times now. Thank you very much. Good, that's all noted. Uh, Councillor Halings, you wanted to... Yes, I think, and I wasn't in the meeting obviously last time, but I've read all of the information and heard the comments this morning. I, I just want to think we please be careful with with language and the use of blackmail. Obviously, isn't something that would be appropriate to this meeting. That that's all I wanted to comment. Chair. Yeah. That's quite right. Okay, thank you very much. I think that's all the speakers of that. Can we uh, go to a vote then? Can I? So the proposal is to defer this for the reasons um, that have been outlined. Um, uh, can I take this by affirmation? Agreed. 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 Is there anyone against? Anyone wish to abstain? No, so I take that as an affirmation then, and that item is deferred. Thank, Thank you, you, members. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, officers. Thank you very much. OK, we now go to back to item five then, which is on page seven of the agenda. Um, so we're at Bourne. This is application 20 stroke 02568 stroke FUL. It's Bourne and the former guest stamp factory site on Bourne Airfield. So the proposal is for a hybrid planning application consisting of full planning permission for phase one and outline planning permission with all matters reserved except access for phase two of the development of the former guest stamp factory site at <coughs> for up to 26,757 square meters or 288,000 square feet of commercial floor space purposes. These are user classes B1C, light industry, B1B, research and development, and B8, warehouse and distribution, with supplementary use class A3, restaurant and cafe, D1, day nursery, creche, and D2, gym. Associated car parking and service yards, external earthworks, attenuation basin and landscaping. This application is subject to an environmental impact assessment. The applicant is the Diageo, Diageo Pension Trust Limited. The uh, presenting officer will go through the material considerations. This is not a departure 
uh, and it's brought to committee because this is a major application. The extension of time is shown on the agenda papers is the 15th of December. Uh, this is now incorrect. This is the 29th of December as the consultation period has uh, been extended. So before the officer presents this, um, I'd just like to ask Mr Carter to explain to the committee um, why the um, public consultation period has been extended. Yes, and thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, the application is subject to an ongoing consultation period, which was triggered inadvertently when the committee notification letters were produced. Uh, I'd like to reassure members that the letters which were sent out to notify parties of the committee were correct, but the planning software system updated the website in incorrectly and extended the consultation period until the 29th of December. As members may recall, a similar issue, although with a different cause, took place earlier in the year. In those cases, the committee resolved to delegate the decision to grant or refuse to officers subject to no issues being raised during the additional consultation period. And the recommendation would be updated to reflect that same approach on this occasion, uh, subject to the agreement of the committee. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you very much. Um, so the recommendation is for approval and the presenting officer is Kate Poiser. Uh, Kate, if you would like to make your presentation, please. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, everybody. I should just upload the slides. <coughs> um, sorry about the delay, I'm getting there. Can you see the slide yet? We're seeing your desktop. Right, yeah. my apologies, my apologies. Nice garden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to swap screens over and hopefully it'll come about. Yeah, so, so can you turn your camera off, please? Ms. Rachinson. Thank you. Yeah. Right. I don't think you're seeing the slide yet, are you? Uh, oh, yeah. Chair, uh, forgive me for interrupting. Kate, would you like me to share the slides for you? Yes, please. If you wouldn't mind, I would be grateful. OK, I'll just do that now. Chair, um, whilst that's happening, can I speak? Who is this, sorry? Uh, Stephen Reed, Chair, if I may. OK, Mr Reed, yes. Um, uh, Heather Williams uh, has put in the chat that she wants clarity on what Mr Carter has said, so I don't know whether you want to address that first. Thank you. Let me see. Uh, could we have the presentation first, do you think? Is this a pressing matter, Councillor Williams? It is, it depends on the answer, will depend if I move for a deferral, Chairman. Uh, go on then. Mr Carter, can I clarify that, so the public consultation, people will have a right to respond up until the 29th of December. Um, is that, is that from what you said? Sorry, the, I just want to clarify that people can comment until the 29th of December. Yes, that's that's correct, Councillor Williams. Legally. So, yes, the as a, sorry, Sandra. That's OK. Um, as as the Bourne development has already been postponed and as people have 
a right to speak on this application. And this is not a small application. This is classed as a major application. I would I would move for deferral that we we look at this once the public consultation has closed because we cannot afford to make such a big mistake on a major application if there is one. When this previously happened, we, we did some cherry picking of some that we thought were, were less contentious than others. I don't think any of us can say that Bourne Airfield is not contentious as a, as a site. Um, and therefore, I would like to move deferral until the public consultation has actually closed, Chairman. Chair, may, I, may I respond on that point? You're muted, Chairman. Right, sorry. Uh, I'm just calling for a second, seconder there before we go back to Mr Carter. Does anyone wish to second Councillor Williams' uh, proposal? Councillor Nick Wright has asked to speak. I don't know if it's to second. OK, Councillor Wright, would you? Yes, I, I'm willing to second this proposal. Um, right. My reason is that if members of the public raise an important issue outside what we already know, we could be influenced by that as uh, councillors when it, you know, in coming to this decision now. We, we don't know what's going to come forward and I would, you know, absolutely recommend deferral on this. Otherwise, we're going to get into a mess with it. OK, thank you very much for that. Uh, we just go back to Mr Carter, who I think would wish to comment. Th thank you, Chair. Um, yes, just for members to consider uh, when making this decision, there's been a very uh, limited number of public representations, notwithstanding the objection from Bourne Parish Council. Um, Highfields Caldercott Parish Council does support the scheme. Um, and with the items which uh, for which we had to follow a similar process earlier in the year, um, the, the wording that the committee agreed to and, and which I repeated um, in my explanation earlier uh, would would require the matter to be referred back to the planning committee um, if any uh, any uh, issue is raised. So any further representation is raised. So uh, my advice would be that the committee can um, safely consider this item today subject to that caveat and that if it if something did come in between now and the 29th of December then the matter would need to be brought back to the committee uh, for further consideration. Thank you chair. Okay thank you. Um, Mr Carr could you just take down the screen so that we can know uh, Apologies chair I'm trying to do that. Um, I'll just try again now. Okay so members we have a proposal for deferral on the basis of Councillor Williams's comments. Um, the debate is open. Do anyone wish to speak to this, please? Do we have any speakers, Vice Chair? I've put it to the vote, Chairman. None, yeah. Chair. None. OK, so uh, let's put that to the vote. So the proposed... Chair, we have Councillor Martin Khan. Yeah. All right. OK, Councillor Khan. I simply uh, wanted to comment that uh, in this case, the uh, use uh, class of the of the site is not changing. It's already an industrial uh, use or former industrial use. So it's not quite, I think, as controversial as some of the other decisions we've made. Uh, um, uh, I, I, I see that the, I don't see that the argument is as strong, um, even though it's um, I can see that it's may be considered a major development. And Councillor Toomey Hawkins. Thank you, Councillor Khan. Uh, Councillor Hawkins, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I am not in favour of a deferral. Uh, there has been uh, a lot of um, consultation on this. And as Mr Carter said, there, I mean, other than the um, comments from Bourne Parish Council, there is no serious um, negative comments about this proposal. And we have been here before. This site actually already has uh, an, uh, a current planning permission for employment. So I'm not sure I see where the controversy is. Bearing in mind, we were talking earlier about deferring too many applications, and now we have a proposal to defer another one. 
um, doesn't seem consistent to me. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hawkins. Is that it? Do I get to sum up my motion, Chairman? No, this, well, Councillor Nick Wright has asked to speak before right. Councillor William sums up. OK, Councillor Wright, please. Thank you, Chairman. And look, this is just another case of a planning application coming forward before we've got the consultations in. We, we've been to the High Court on this. You, you know, even if it is a mistake, and we saw that on the previous application that we've just dealt with, mistakes are made, that we've got to get this right. We can't bring stuff to the planning committee till you've finished the consultation process. And it's all right letting officers make up their mind when everything's in, if it comes in or not. We have to wait till the consultation process is finished. And that is very clear. Uh, that is my opinion. Right, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Councillor Hawkins, and I, sorry, <laughs> Councillor Williams, would you like to sum up then, please? Thank you. Just to say that a consultation is not simply for those that want to object, it's for those that wish to support as well. Oh, um, hang on, um, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Councillor Williams. I, I see that there's a late entry um, okay. for Councillor Richard Williams who would like to speak, so I'll come back to you just in a moment, Councillor Williams, if that's fine. Councillor Richard Williams, please. Apologies, Chair. It was, it was a late entry. Um, I'll keep it very short. Look, uh, just to say, look, uh, it, it's a matter of law that you can't determine a planning application um, before the consultations closed. I mean, it, 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 it does seem pretty clear. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Heather Williams, then, please. If, if I'm safe to go, Chairman. Yeah, you're safe um, to go. Then we have a vote. OK, so all I'd say, um, what I just said a moment ago, that responding to a, a consultation isn't an indication of support or refusal that people can can um, contact us up until the date the consultation ends regardless of whether it's accident or not and on the grounds of consistency i raised this when this happened some time ago my my understanding is those ones that went through weren't actually tested thankfully um, but we don't really know if this if this was to be tested and and there is split opinion on this one parish council has no objection one parish council does and i'm sure we all want to hear from residents and it feels that again we will be putting ourselves in a very uncomfortable position that if something something new was to crop up we then have to do it having already determined one way and the, and the public confidence in us would be would, if we were to come to the same conclusion as the time before despite the new comments you know, faith will be gone, um, and quite understandably so if we if we don't defer. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, we'll go to a vote then, so I do a roll call. So the proposal is to defer this item until after the end of the public consultation period. Uh, so if you're in favour of that, you're for it. If you're against, you're against. If you wish to abstain, you abstain. So I will call members now. So Councillor Bradnam, what's your vote, please? Uh, I'm for uh, deferral. I had a number of questions that I wanted to seek clarification on, which I shall do in the intervening gap. OK, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Khan. Um, Again. Okay. Uh, Councillor Fain. Against deferral. Thank you. Councillor Dr. Hawkins. Against. Thank you. Councillor Rippers is not with us. Councillor Roberts, please. For deferment, Chairman. Thank you. For, thank you. Councillor Heather Williams. Four. Thank you. Councillor Richard Williams. Four. Thank you. Councillor Wright. Four. Four. Thank you. And my vote is. Chair, my, I think you've missed me out as well. Oh, sorry. Councillor Hawking, uh, Hailing, sorry. Against. Against. Uh, my vote is against. Uh, so it's one, two, 
That's five, four, and Chairman, I think it's five, five, five against. So it's a draw. So the in this circumstance, the um, chair has the casting vote. And my casting vote obviously will remain the, the same and I'm against. So the uh, deferral falls by six votes to five. Thank you. We've dealt with that. So we return then to the agenda item. Um, and the officer is about to make uh, her presentation. If we can go back to the presentation then please. All right, thank you, Chair. I shall have another go at loading up the presentation. Yes, Hopefully I'll get it right this time. All right. Can you see the presentation now? Yes. Yes, yeah. yes. good, good. Just a delay there. All right, thank you. Um, first of all, there is some further updating to this item. The County Highway Authority has reconsidered its request for a widening of the stretch of footpaths between Bossert's Way and Clare Drive. It now wishes to withdraw this and raises no objections to the development. Condition one, which requires this to be carried out, is therefore omitted from the officer recommendation. Right, move on to the next slide. Uh, this chair, slide. my apologies. Can I interrupt? Um, I'll have a slight issue with the stream when we've been uh, sharing and unsharing the slides. It's got a little bit frozen. Can I just quickly sort that out, please? Yep, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Apologies for the interruption. We, we are now live again. Right, thank you. Sorry for that interruption. Uh, there was a slight technical issue. Uh, we're going back now to the uh, presenting officer. Right, thank you, Chair. Uh, this slide shows the site within its context. The site is outlined in red. It includes the access road from Cordicook Roundabout to the St. Neitz Road, known as Wellington Way. Here it is, I shall run the pointer over it. At St. Neitz Road, the A428 runs east to west across the top of the slide. The village to the east is Highfields Cordicott, separated from the site by a small woodland. To the west is the David Ball Industrial Site. To the northeast corner lies agricultural fields. Bourne Airfield lies further to the east and to the south. Part of an old runway can be seen uh, running diagon diagonally uh, to the west there. This application, this application site lies within the strategic site of Bourne Airfield New Village. This slide shows the spatial framework diagram taken from the Bourne Airfield New Village Supplementary Planning Document. The application site lies within the purple area and occupies most of this space. The remainder of the purple area includes the Phase 3 land of the Cassant site and the David Ball site. The pale yellow areas would accommodate the proposed 3,500 new dwellings, the dark yellow for mixed use, the large red area would be the village centre with shops and other services, and the small red circle for our neighbourhood hub. Dark green 
is existing woodland and the lighter greens for green corridors, open spaces and strategic landscaping. Except for the purple area, the rest of the site is owned by Countryside Properties and the Taylor family. A separate application for planning permission has been made for this land. It is an outline application for the new village. Whilst it has not yet been determined, it has progressed a significant way through the planning negotiations and will be the subject of a special meeting to members. The supplementary planning document for Bourne Airfield New Village includes the existing employment site and requires there to be good connectivity between it and the new village. The applicants for both the Gestamp planning application and the new village have liaised throughout the process to achieve this. The access parameter plan for the new village has indicative links into the settlement site and these are reflected in the layout of the Gestamp site plan, which will be displayed later. The green dash lines on this application are indicative of those links. This is an aerial photograph of the site taken from above the A428 looking south. The application site is here. The Bourne Airfield New Village site includes fields in the foreground and the fields the other side of the application site and includes the woodland beyond. It also includes a narrow strip of land on the edge of the woodland and the field in the corner. So land here is part of the um, Bourne Airfield New Village and round here and the woodland and a strip coming up here. As you can see, um, the application site is enveloped by the New Village site. Highfields Corticot is over here. Here is the access road known as Wellington Way. It is in the ownership of Countryside Properties and the Taylor family. The applicant for the Gestamp site has right of way over this access. Wellington Way will be reconfigured as part of the new village scheme and would include segregated facilities for pedestrians and cyclists. And it is intended that it would be implemented with the first development phase of that scheme. This is a parameter plan showing three phases of the development of the former Gestamp site. The blue is phase one and includes details. The yellow, phase two, is in outline. And the orange hatching is phase three, which does not form part of this application and is to be submitted at a later date. The green is strategic landscaping and black is existing access road. This is an illustrative master plan. The details of phase one are as shown and the details of phase two are indicative. This site here, this is phase two and that is indicative. The two green corridors are shown, the central corridor and the land to the east. Central corridor and the land to the east. The green corridor shows a swale for surface water drainage running its length with a pedestrian cycle path running a gentle serpentine course through it. The units either side would front onto the corridor. The eastern corridor would contain an attenuation basin, a pedestrian cycle path and planting. Unit 3 abuts this area. It is the largest unit on the site and it is intended for a named occupant, Cambridge Design Partnership. Both of the pedestrian cycle paths would link to intended paths beyond the site and into the new village scheme. Servicing would take place to the rear of the units. Small units, which may be suitable for businesses are to the south, local businesses are to the south. Shared car parking is to the north of the site and some to the south. A few spaces would serve the individual units. Cycle parking is scattered in various locations around the site. 
the Leylandi hedge referred to in the report uh, would be replaced by new tree planting belt along the top here. The land beyond is intended for mixed development and as a new village scheme. This, uh, this slide shows the two main elevations of Unit 3. The remaining elevations are largely blank. This would be the largest unit on the site, measuring just over 14 metres high. It would be clad in shades of grey with gold highlighting the inside of some of the fins. This slide shows the front and rear elevations of units four, five and six. These are medium small units fronting onto the central green corridor. The architectural style of the units would be consistent across the site. This is the multi-storey car park that would occupy the northeast corner of the site. As you can see, it is just two storeys high. And if you look at the ground level, you can see that it will be partly sunk into the ground. And this is the final slide. It is an artist's impression of units one and two, the north facing elevations, with the green central corridor running between them. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Members, any uh, points of clarification you'd like to raise? with the officer. Councillor Bradnam. All right, thank you. Councillor Bradnam, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, forgive me, I have a number of questions to do with the conditions. This relates to where they've been recommended and I cannot find them in the um, conditions in the recommendations. So if I might just go through them and then perhaps well, hang on a, a moment this is clarification on the presentation i mean you can r raise the conditioning when we when we come to the debate okay if you prefer i'll leave it till then chairman yeah please thank you very much for that uh vice chair do we have any further questions no further chair no further okay thank you very much um, for the presentation and we'll go to public speakers um I understand we have uh, two representatives for the applicants, Mr. Aitchison and Mr. Beedman. Uh, are you with us, please? If you'd like to uh, on yes, Chair, Mr. Aitchison yeah. here. Yes, and Mike Beedman is here as well. Fine. Okay. C could we take down the uh, presentation, please, so that we can see each other? That's good. OK, thank you very much. So um, if you're not speaking, uh, Councillor Bradman, would you turn your camera off, please? Thank you. So, gentlemen, you, you know the the system is three minutes um, and then we'll see if members want clarification on the, the points. So when you're ready, uh, off you go. Good morning, Chair, Councillors. I am Jeremy Aitchison of Aitchison Developments. My company was appointed by the site owner, Diageo Pension Trust, two years ago, and the vision was to create a development that would exceed what a standard industrial estate offers in every possible way. We wanted to create a place that would attract both local industrial businesses and larger technology companies. We wanted a highly sustainable development that looked amazing and that would attract high quality companies and their staff. That development is called Bourne Quarter. It was a visit to the high tech campus in Eindhoven, Netherlands in March 2019 that gave our team the inspiration for the design that is the subject of this application. We decided that a landscape led parkland setting using very high quality materials would enable us to develop buildings that are immensely flexible and can provide both standard industrial units through to buildings that can incorporate large office and laboratory areas. We are sure that the staff from all the businesses that choose to come to Bourne Quarter will appreciate the environment that we are creating that includes a cafe, creche, gym, outdoor trim trails. 
we are delighted to have signed our first tenant, the Cambridge Design Partnership. Bourne Quarter will deliver much needed commercial space on what is currently a brownfield site and will eventually deliver an estimated 800 plus jobs. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Councillors. Uh, good morning, my name's uh, Mike Beadman. I'm a director and founder of Cambridge Design Partnership and uh, the lead tenant, as, as Jeremy has just said. Um, as a quick background, Cambridge Design Partnership uh, started in Toft and has consistently grown at about 20% per year since uh, 1996 when we started. Um, we're, we continually adapt and diversify our engineering consultancy, making us now one of the top four consultancies in the Cambridge area. Um, we've been based in Toft from that outset and our countryside location is an important part of our image uh, for both clients and our employees. Since 2016, we've been looking for potential new sites and as various planning applications recently have shown, we've now overpacked our site in Toft with temporary buildings um, and we've taken on additional space most recently in Barton and Central Cambridge just to cope with our expansion and manage our temporary, hopefully, distancing challenges uh, of this last year. This has highlighted that working on a distributed site is actually very inefficient for us. Um, and so we, we've been looking at options from as far afield as Camborne, Sawston and elsewhere, but they're all single buildings. Uh, the opportunity at Bourne Quarter offers us that uh, ability to regroup into one large unit, uh, unit three with a second floor inserted, or a first floor, I should say, becomes a 56,000 square foot building um, and gives us the opportunity to expand into a similar sized building again uh, in a few years time with the second phase. Over the last year, we've worked at length with an interior design team and the architects to fit out uh, to design a fit out that's suitable for our company for the next 20 years in the hope that we can move in in early 2022 and for our, our employees Bourne Quarter is again west of Cambridge same distance from central Cambridge but with even better cycle access and other transport options and so it offers a perfect solution for us uh, for the future of our business. So thank you very much. Uh, members, uh, do you have any points of clarification you'd like to raise? Last no, year? So far, Chair. No. Okay, so thank you very much, then, gentlemen. That's noted. And if we move on to the next speaker, um, and that is Councillor O'Brien. Councillor Brian, are you, are you with us, please? Yes, I'm here, uh, and the name is O'Brien. O'Brien, oh, okay. I was just doing my best. <laughs> yeah, as we uh, I, apologies for that. Uh, and I understand you're representing uh, Bourne Parish Council. Uh, can I just confirm for the record that you have the permission of the parish council to speak on their behalf? I do have the permission of the Parish Council to speak on their behalf. Uh, thank you, Chair and Councillors. Um, uh, first of all, I, I, can I just uh, have a minute to acknowledge the fact that the uh, consultation for this uh, application uh, is due to end on the 29th of December. So we were, uh, as a Parish Council, very surprised to learn that it was coming forward to committee today uh, and remain surprised. Uh, so. Um, from there, I'd like to just cover the fact that we object to this on a number of grounds, mostly transport. Uh, since the transport assessment uh, was um, published by the developer in May 2019, you'll all know that uh, the uh, Camborne to Cambridge busway uh, project has been suspended. Uh, and so um, there are about 12 occasions in the transport assessment document uh, that reference this busway, providing better connection and an alternative means of transport to assist reducing congestion. A segregated busway means that more journeys can be made by bus. It's a critical transport infrastructure to help support and shift 
from the reliance on the private car to more sustainable modes of transport. Now, we don't know what's happening with the Camborne to Cambridge busway, notwithstanding the latest developments. Uh, and so the assessment from transport to suggest that there will be a significant shift away from private cars to public transport is premature, to say the least. Secondly, we have serious concerns over the discrepancies between the number of car journeys that the transport assessment suggests. There are 624 planned uh, car parking spaces, and we're told that there will be up to 800 people uh, working on the site. Yet in the uh, hour between 7.30 and 8.30 in the morning, uh, the transport assessment suggests that there will only be 124 cars entering the site. Now, we don't understand and would like further time to assess why in a, in a development of 800 people uh, with 624 car parking spaces, only 124 cars will enter the site, the site during the morning rush hour. Uh, so that needs further investigation. Uh, and then finally, uh, uh, surprised to hear uh, Councillor Toomey Hawkins say that there's nothing contentious about this, but you'll know that cumulatively, uh, in terms of Bourne Airfield, uh, and it's nice that I can legitimately make comments about Bourne Airfield, even though this isn't the, the, uh, the Bourne Airfield application, but uh, the Bourne Airfield application does need to be taken into consideration because uh, Wellington Way will also be the way in which people can access Bourne Airfield. Uh, so cumulatively, who has done the assessment on traffic moving towards Childerley Roundabout from Wellington Way for Bourne Airfield, the Bourne Quarter and the developments on Caldecott Highfields. Uh, so I suggest to the committee this is premature. We should have the consultation open until the 29th of December. There are significant issues around transport in relation to the high quality public transport and its delivery. The number of parking spaces related to the number of journeys in and out and cumulatively what will happen at Childerley Roundabout when Bourne Airfield, the Bourne Quarter and all developments in Caldecott Highfields are completed. Thank you. Right, thank you very much. Members, any points of clarification you'd like to raise with Councillor O'Brien? I can't see any at the moment. No, Chair. No? OK, so thank you very much indeed for your uh, contribution. Chair, Councillor Roberts. Oh, Councillor Roberts, yep, yeah, please. Good morning, Councillor O'Brien. Hope you're well. Um, I wonder if you could tell me, obviously you've made mention on a couple of occasions um, in, in your presentation about the consultation exercise. Um, and obviously you heard that we did have a vote on it. Um, do you know if your parish council then is intending to put in further um, observations in that period up to the 29th of December? We would be looking to put in some further quali qualifications around the uh, number of car journeys uh, listed in the um, in the transport assessment. And also because of the development since we first consulted on this, since we first consulted on this, the Camborne to Cambridge busway has been suspended. Uh, so our initial assessments um, 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 have been coloured by that and I think further time to determine what the out, the outcome or impact uh, of uh, of the current developments around the Camborne to Cambridge Busway means that uh, we we will need to put in further consultation. Thank you very much for that, Chair. The legal officer would like to speak. Right, thank you, uh, Mr. Reid, please. Uh, um, Chair, if I may, um, can I suggest that we have a five minute adjournment? Uh, on what grounds? Uh, on the grounds that um, effectively uh, Councillor Roberts has uh, uh, in effect established that uh, Bourne Parish Council will be putting in further representations uh, following today and prior to the end of the consultation period. OK, uh, thank you. All right, members, we will adjourn for a few moments whilst I take advice from the legal people.
Thank you very much, Tim. You're now live again. All right, thank you. Uh, my apologies for that um, adjournment. Um, we have a, a discussion and Mr Carter would like to address the committee. Thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, um, just for uh, members awareness, the reason that the application was still brought to the committee, um, notwithstanding the ongoing consultation period, was that a full detailed consultation on this application had already taken place. Uh, representations had been received from the local parish councils and others, as you will have seen. Uh, the additional consultation period, um, which was triggered for the reason I explained earlier, uh, was an error uh, and uh, did update the website to reflect that the consultation period would be open until the 29th of December. Uh, following the comments of Councillor O'Brien on behalf of Bourne Parish Council, um, it appears inevitable that further representations will be received during that period. Uh, and for those reasons, um, I would advise the committee to consider again deferring the application until the January meeting which will be after the conclusion of that consultation period. Thank you, Chair. Happy to take any questions on that. Thank you very much. Uh, any clarification required on that? It's perfectly straightforward, I think, but uh, clearly sure. uh, if any um, uh, further comments did come in uh, before the 29th of December, then we would have to reconvene uh, and bring this back to the next meeting. So um, in those circumstances, it seems um, that uh, there's little purpose in us pursuing today. So I uh, have some Several speakers. Um, Several sorry. requests to speak. We've got Councillor Wright, Councillor Fain and Councillor Richard Williams. Thank you, Councillor Wright, please. And Councillor Roberts. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman, um, for allowing me to speak. Again, you know, I'm really concerned about this. You know, if we take, if we vote on this today, we are predetermining ourselves when it comes back. We just, you can't behave like this. You know, if the consultation process is running, you can't, you can't vote till you've considered all the applications in and you know it's it's chaos to carry on like this and you know we need to defer this thank you yeah i mean i'm about to put a proposal to defer it so if that's what you're you're requesting that's what's going to happen um so if you want to make other comments that's fine uh councillor fain chair sure. I just wonder whether the applicants uh, are entitled to a view on the any proposal to defer. I'm afraid not. Uh, Councillor Richard Williams. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I, I understand that these things happen, um, you know, because of accidents and it's not necessarily officers fault, but there are legitimate public law rights. The legitimate expectations are created by um, consultation expiry dates and these are legal rights and we shouldn't be trying to override them. Um, I'm glad we've got to the right decision in the end but we could have done this much more quickly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Roberts. Thank you, Chairman. I don't know if anybody's proposed. I think maybe Councillor Williams, Richard Williams, is maybe proposing. And if you need a seconder, I will second it, Chairman. I think we have to. We're not above the law. We have to. Uh, we are obliged to 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 be legal. Indeed, no, I will be making the proposal. Uh, you have Councillor Heather Williams and Councillor Martin Khan. Heather Williams, please. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll support the deferral now as I supported it early on. It was quite clear and it's a shame that we've wasted lots of people's time today when we could have had this decision sewn up a lot earlier. Right, thank you. And Councillor Khan. I simply wanted to say that I think the uh, procedure has actually gone the correct way. I, we, we are committed to try to prevent deferrals. Uh, and it seemed to me that there was a way forward earlier on. Um, well, the information we had earlier on to proceed without deferring. 
with this in additional information, it changes the situation. Uh, and it's clear to my mind that we now do have to defer. We haven't got any option. Um, so I think we've proceeded the correct way. We've shown our willingness to try to avoid deferrals. In the light of information, we now changed our opinion. We have to change our opinion. And um, unfortunately, we do have to defer. And that's the situation. OK, thank you very much. I don't think we're any more. Chair, if I could just comment. Who is that? It's uh, Stephen Reed, Chair, if I may. Yeah, Mr. Um, Reed, please. I, I think um, uh, some members are using uh, language which suggests that actually a decision has been taken. Uh, that decision hasn't been taken. What you're going to do is to put that to the vote and see if members wish to. Uh, so I think the language used by a couple of members in, in this part has, has assumed that it will now be deferred that that assumption cannot be made until it's put to the vote yes thank you i'm sure we will appreciate that uh no other speakers of councillor havens no? no chair okay we're going to go to the vote then i'm proposing that uh, given the change circumstances that this is deferred could i have a seconder please i'll second that chairman that's Councillor Bradnam. Councillor Bradnam, thank you. Um, do we need to go to a vote? Is this affirmation? Anyone against Agreed. 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 So no one against. So that is passed by affirmation. Um, item five, a born is deferred. Uh, thank you very much. Um, we just came up to 11.30. Um, I think we'll have a 10 minute break. Um, if you'd like to come back again, please, at um, 11.40. Eleven forty. So uh, Aaron, if you could close this down, please. Are we off air, Aaron? Is Aaron still with us? Hello? Yeah. Is that I Aaron? Think, I think we're, we still seem to be live, Chair. Yes, but I'm trying to contact Aaron. Can you hear Chair, us? Aaron? Chair, I'm, it's Chris Carter. I'm just contacting Aaron now by phone.
Okay. Thank you very much, Chair. We're now live again. All right. Thank you. Uh, welcome back to South Cairns District Council uh, Planning Committee. Um, my apologies uh, or those associated with the Bourne application that we're not in a position to um, proceed on that one. We're now moving to agenda item seven, which is on page 55 of the agenda. Um, this is an audit report on um, process uh, review. Jonathan Tully, who is the um, head of shared internal audit, uh, will be presenting this review. It's before us to be noted. Uh, Mr Tully, would you give your presentation, please? Thank you very much, Chair. And good morning, everyone. So uh, for those who have not met me before, my name is Jonathan. I'm the head of internal audit for the council. Um, we completed a review in response to the two recent planning permission incidents where decision notices were issued in error. We wanted to respond promptly and group leaders agreed that our report should be presented to the planning committee. My reports attached at Appendix A, which starts on page 57. Hopefully the report is fairly easy to follow, um, but I do appreciate some of you may not have seen an audit report before, so I was planning to just provide a very quick summary of the report and highlight some key points. So on page 57, we have a cover sheet and simply that just includes summary information, such as our opinion on the control environments, the number of actions that the council will implement as part of this review process. And you might find it also useful to look at our glossary of terms on page 74, which explains some of the terms we use. Our executive report starts on page 58, and this sets out our scope and objectives. Simply in both cases, we wanted to identify what went wrong so that we could start to put mitigating controls in place. Our summary of findings are on page um, 59, and the key points that I would highlight here, both the cases were the result of human error, and there's clear supporting information that shows the council intended to process these correctly. The council has procedures and separations of duties in place, which provides an element of checking prior to completion. However, these two incidents do demonstrate that the controls were ineffective. The council did quickly respond to both incidents, and contacted customers to apologise and also took immediate remedial steps and have been updating procedures to help prevent these from happening again. I think both cases need to be seen in the context of the current environment and I've highlighted there are multiple factors which have contributed to the procedures not working effectively. These are important to consider when reviewing and developing further controls to mitigate the risks. My detailed findings are on pages 61 to 68. Now, I don't propose to go through these in detail, um, but suffice to say for each case, they explain the contributing factors and also opportunities for improvement. On pages 69 to 72, this is where we have our management agreed actions. This is fairly typical of an audit report and simply it's an action plan for improvements developed from the detailed findings earlier in the report. We're asking committee to, to note the contents of the report. Um, so thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Tully. Um, before we get into um, discussion on this, can I just clarify with you, given our experience this morning, that uh, are you satisfied that lessons have been learned? Um, from these, particular two cases, um, I believe so. Um, as I've highlighted in my reports, one of them were, in particular was uh, unusual and not something we've had to deal with before. Um, it might be unlikely to, to happen again, um, but certainly they've learned from this and we've seen immediate remedial action put in place to help improve those controls. No, but it wasn't the error this morning somewhat similar to the one that you were investigating? I, um, um, and a system going its own way. Potentially, um, there's always 
different risks that can materialise. Um, what I'm happy is that as soon as these are being identified, they are putting controls in place to improve them and try and prevent those risks happening again. What we cannot, with a, without a crystal ball, is predict what different type of uh, risks may materialise in the future. Oh, I hope you've got a crystal ball. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, do we have any speakers? Yes, this? Chair, but Councillor Heather Williams. Right, Councillor Williams, please. Thank you, um, and thank you for the re the report and it coming to us swiftly. I just wanted to do one clarification and possibly have to declare an interest as a, as a group leader, as, as was referenced. Um, on the distribution list, it did come to group leaders ahead of that discussion um, about what the process, so that came to uh, group leaders ahead of plan committee, which isn't referenced on there. So for transparency purposes, I think it's important that that's included. Um, just picking up on something that the, the chairman just referred to uh, about the, I think there is differences. We're talk, These were about decision notices going out, whereas the problems we've experienced today is about consultation extensions, accidental um, extensions. Now that is something that I believe it was five, five or six happened some months ago and we've then had a case of two more today. So I don't believe that is an area of work that internal audit have looked at, is that that sort of um, accidental extension of consultation, but maybe following on today might be something worth pursuing and looking at. Um, but on the report itself, um, I, I know that you've identified human error. Um, I would just like, but I'm just wondering um, to make sure these things aren't repeat problems. When we move to the, um, is it, I might pronounce it, IDOC uniform. I think I've, I've got that right. Um, yes. I'll be honest, IT is not my strong suit. Um, when we move to that system, what training was provided to officers? And what further training has been identified? Because, you know, it's it may maybe human error, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the full lanes on those uh, blame those on those humans. If we've mm. not provided adequate training, for example, then then that's inevitable that the mistakes are going to happen. So, um, is that something that you've looked at? What training has been received, or perhaps this is more uh, towards um, Sharon Brown about has training been identified and required moving forward? Um, I think those are my my uh, my list. Thank you, Chairman. Yep. Chair, you have um, Sharon Brown who has requested. You have other members of the committee too, but I wondered if um, you'd like to, to ask Sharon Brown to speak first. Yes, please. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Chair. First of all, I'd just like to reiterate the public apology that has already been made in relation to these errors. So uh, clearly it's very unfortunate that these errors occurred and we have put um, as many measures in place as we can to ensure that these errors do not happen again. There is an ongoing process in relation to those as per the recommendations set out in the report. We are undertaking a process review um, in relation to decisions, um, processes on the system um, and with officers who are signing off those decisions and that will be completed in early January. We have put additional prompts into the system to address that so that um, officers are warned um, when they're on the recommendation and decision screens and we're also taking forward the other recommendations in this report. In relation to the other uh, matters that have occurred with the notification letters, um, as members um, will be aware, we've had a number of, um, of um, ICT issues. These are not necessarily always related to the planning software system, but we've had a, a number of systems closed down over weekends where we've had works being carried out, maintenance works relating to server upgrade projects and also to de technical difficulties corporately and uh, maintenance etc. Um, the reasons that we uh, changed the notifications were to extend the consultation period 
What we did not know was that the consultation period was imposed on all letters that went out. So um, one of the points that was touched on was when you've got new processes and new systems, it's making sure that you're fully testing the new system so that if you do make a change to it, you understand the wider implications of making one change and what implications that would have on the rest of the system. So we've got a much tighter process in place now for systems changes. We have introduced a service champions group where changes to systems require authorization only for myself and the head of development management, Nigel Blaisby. And we are also undertaking further training in relation to Councillor Williams's point about what training was undertaken. Uniform training was undertaken in advance of rollout of the new system. But obviously, there is a clear need to ensure you are repeating that training and refreshing that training as you go forward. And um, we've had a recent session um, refreshing uh, the senior officers who sign off decision notices um, and undertaking some further uh, discussions with those officers to make sure they all fully understand the importance of this process and that we're all following one single process in approaching the sign off of decision notices. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, Mr Tully, I don't know if there's anything further you wanted to come back on from uh, Councillor Williams's comments. Um, I think just the only outstanding point there was on the first one about the distribution list. And I'm happy to update that to reflect it when to group leaders. Right, OK, yep. uh, we have further speakers, do we? Councillor Haylings? Yes, we do. So Councillor Heather Williams. Followed uh, by Councillor Bradnam. I've just opened. Oh, OK, thank you. Councillor Bradnam, followed by Councillor Khan. Um, OK, Councillor Bradnam, please. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> I just wanted to say that um, I I'm very glad that we've done this review and it's very thorough. And thank you to Mr Tully for doing that. Um, my feeling is that all of the right actions have now been taken. Um, you know, apologies have been made. It was an accident and it was an accident that uh, evolved from a changing computer system. And I think some of those changes are very hard to predict what the knock on effects will be. And also one of the cases was a very unusual one. And that's probably not a case you would necessarily have anticipated in the testing process. So I'm very pleased to see the immediate actions that were taken and the long term actions that are planned. And I think this has been properly investigated, properly analysed, and I'm, I'm confident that we will go forward to, you know, properly. However, strange and peculiar combinations of cases, particular circumstances and computers will inevitably sometimes throw up these these situations that we can't predict. So I'm I'm fully confident that we are doing whatever we can in the circumstances to resolve the issue. Thank you, Chairman. OK, thank you very much for that. Uh, Councillor Khan, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm also happy that we've dealt with, well, I think the these two particular cases, but the this planning committee has also demonstrated other problems. There's clearly a general problem to do with uh, confusion regarding um, consultation end dates because uh, uh, this has happened several times and uh, we need to, it's important that this is resolved. But I'd also refer to the other application in Falmia where there was uh, this problem to do with the, the date on the Q class, um, Q class permission, uh, which was error. That was done under the previous system before the new computer system was coming. Under, so it's not just a modern problem. And I, 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 if this previous application, Q class had been implemented, you would have had an application which was implemented, which in fact was out without planning permission. It could have been very serious. Um, I, I am concerned that there may be other cases which we are unaware of and where development may have taken place where, where there's an errors. And I don't know how one could check that. And I would like advice upon how we could check that there aren't other examples of this sort of problem. It only arose very much later when we were dealing with the second application. We found out there was this problem. Um, it had been sitting there like a time bomb all this time. 
Thank you very much. Councillor Holings, do we have any further speakers? Yes, we have Councillor Richard Williams and Councillor Deborah Roberts. All right. Councillor Williams, please. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I just reiterate the points that have already been made about looking into this um, consultation date issue, which, which does keep cropping up. Um, on this report, um, again, I'd like to um, thank Mr Tully for, for, for the very thorough report. Um, I, I just had a question about something that's on page eight of his report, page 64 of our bundle, um, and this idea of applications being referred back to case officers for final approval before they're, they're issued. Um, I mean, I think that's dismissed as a or not favoured as a routine solution, but the report does say this process is in place at other councils. So I, I suppose I really got two questions is how common is this in other councils? Are we a real outlier in, in not doing this? And, and is there not a case to do this whilst we're in this pandemic situation and people are not working in the office and can't pop across two desks and ask somebody anything, um, at least for a temporary period, might not that be a good solution until you know we get back to normal work and given everything else the report says about the um the impact that you know remote working had on on these problems thank you all right thank you very much for that mr tally do you have any comments on that uh thank you I, I mean i don't actually have statistics to hand as to all the different councils this has came up from in conversation with other officers who worked at different councils so i couldn't give you a comprehensive statistic across the nation um but it's a fair point. The challenge of what we have to do is manage uh, risk versus um, processes efficiency. And uh, Sharon might want to come in at this point, but I know as part of their process review, these are things that they're considering about the smartest way to work going forwards. Uh, Sharon, did you want to comment on that? Yes, I did. So this is indeed part of the process review. This is one of the options that we are considering and obviously we're weighing up, as Jonathan has said, in relation to um, minimising risk as opposed to you know, maximum efficiency. And just coming back to the point about the notification letters, we have removed the level of automation uh, in the system which created that problem in relation to the notification. So we've stripped the system back by a layer, um, so that should not happen again. Good, thank you. Uh, Councillor Roberts, please. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I have nothing really to say um, other than thank you to Mr Tully for the work that he's he's done up today. He's obviously read the remit and, and has acted accordingly, so I think that's, that's very good. Uh, but my concerns are um, the further ones that we need to look at this um, consultation process um, and I don't think members have covered themselves in glory today. I don't think we should be just um, critical of the of the offices and the internal procedures. Actually, when somebody says to a committee, as did uh, Councillor Richard Williams, who is our legal beagle as a member, you know, for those of you that don't understand, he he's very knowledgeable. This is his line of business. So when a councillor with that background says to you, Actually, you have to act legally. You have to act ultra varies. You have to do it properly. And then an, an amount of us decide that well, we'll take no notice of that and, and we'll continue on. Um, and then obviously um, we've run into the embarrassing situation that we've had this morning. So I think it's time that we also as members started to be less arrogant, less full of ourselves and actually listened to the the arguments that are put in a much more sensible way than we are doing. And, and I would I say that the you founding... have to accept that everybody acts on the um, in good faith. OK, thank well, you. That's your opinion. Can I just say with regards to the Falmir yeah, one as well, the other thing that um, needs to be uh, in our minds here is that the Falmir one was a question of somebody not properly checking and the fact was that it, it again it was outside of the organization people outside of the organization that saw the mistakes now that is not acceptable it it, it must not be members of the public who are having to pull us up and tell us that a huge mistake has been made 
And so I, I will go back to if Mr Tully continues his exercise and fleshes further stuff out, I think we've got to get this over. There has to be much more checking. Um, you know, if you were in private business and you were writing something, you, you would get somebody to read the draft um, and, and go with it with you. And I think there's not enough that, of that actually going on. But I think what you've done today, Mr Tully, thank you very much. OK, thank you. Councillor Haynes, any further speakers? No further speakers. No, thank you. So we're asked to note this, so I'm sure we have noted it. And we move on. So the next item on the agenda is item eight, uh, enforcement report. Uh, is the enforcement officer with us this morning? Um, Mr Carter, do you know if the enforcement officer is available? He doesn't appear to be there, Chair, so um, I'm happy to take any questions away if members would like. Um, what I did after the last meeting was um, was ask the enforcement officer to uh, respond directly to individual members who had issues, and I propose to do that again if there are any, any clarifications okay. required. Right, fine. Thank you. So members, do you wish to raise any uh, points? Councillor Halings, do we have the uh, speakers? Yeah, we have Councillor Nick Wright, Heather Williams, Councillor Williams and Councillor Bradnam. All right, thank you. Uh, Councillor Wright, please. Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> I think this is the second meeting in a row that we haven't been able to be assisted by an enforcement officer. No. Um, uh, I would just like to question, with that in mind, the strength of our team. Um, we've lost some very good enforcement officers in the last year through various reasons. Um, and I'm anxious that, you know, they're struggling to cope when they can't attend a planning committee. And, you know, that is a matter for um, the, the leader, uh, the lead in the planning service to look look at and yourself, Chairman, as well as the officers. And I'll leave that with you. I'm anxious to speak about Cottenham, um, which doesn't appear on this report. Um, I'm conscious that we've had an action there running for over three years now, and it's been in the courts. Um, we've had one interim report a year ago, which said that the legal team were considering going to the High Court and doing injunctions there. As I know, this hasn't happened and it's just being allowed to drift. If it isn't dealt with, the offences there will become legal because the amount of time it's being left. It, you know, it's not appropriate that as a council we don't take action where there are clear breaches as identified by the courts um, as they were in 2017. I don't think since that time there's been any improvement uh, apart from 60% uh, of the people complying with it, but that still left 40% who didn't. And uh, in spite of fines and things, you know, through the local courts, nothing has been done and the breaches are still occurring. So I'm going to request that we have a legal officer at our next meeting. We have a monthly update on that site um, in our report, which conveniently has disappeared so we can all forget about it. But uh, residents of Cottenham have been contacting me about this and I am very concerned. Thank you, Chairman. OK, thank you very much for that. I'm sure Mr Carter has heard that, as has Sharon Brown. Uh, OK, we'll move on then to Councillor Heather Williams, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, firstly, I'm aware that Gordon has left the authority and I'm sure like many of us, he has he was a, a great officer for us, so I'd just like to record um, well, my thanks, I'm sure that of the committee. 
theory of the work he's done at the authority, who is an excellent enforcement officer. Um, I would like to raise again concern around the year to date figures on the amount of cases closed um, and you know what else but in a constructive way what else do the enforcement team need or what support do they need to be able to be closing more cases and taking more action um, and I do I am concerned about the case that Councillor Wright mentions as well but um, but yeah what what does what is going what is going on to to make this so so different to what it has been in previous years. Thank you, Chairman. And oh, thank, thank you, Gordon. Yeah, uh, Mr. Carter, do you not want to comment on that? Chair, through you, I think Sharon Brown may wish to comment on that. All oh, right. Okay. Thank you very much, Chair yes, Sharon. Um, just in generally in relation to the enforcement resources, um, we've had some agency staff supporting the team in recent months, but we are proposing to carry out some permanent recruitment in the new year in relation to the enforcement team, but we are replacing Gordon in the short term so that the uh, numbers of staff in the team are consistent with the number of posts, it's just some of those are agency staff at the moment, uh, but they are experienced agency staff. In relation to what improvements we can make to enforcement processes and speeding up uh, the serving of notices and increasing the number of notices that we serve and responding more promptly to enforcement issues, we will be undertaking a wholesale review of our enforcement processes next year. This is something that we will be bringing forward to our new service plan and it's going to be a, a top priority for the shared planning service um, and that will really be a back to basics review. There'll be some benchmarking also with other local authorities who've got very good records of um, serving notices and efficient procedures. Thank you. Chairman, could I ask a supplementary? Yes, please Thank you. Um, it's just the reference to agency, um, that we're having agency staff. Um, I'm just conscious that quite often people live quite far away and obviously with something like enforcement where you need to be out on site sometimes same day. Um, can we have some assurance that the agency staff that are in do are on site and are in the vicinity five days a week or um, is it being done remotely? Because that would be very concerning and might explain why they're not able to get on, on site so quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williams. No, I can assure you that um, we do respond within the team to urgent requests to go on site. And so particularly what we look for in enforcement officers when we recruit them is that ability to be able to respond quickly and if necessary to carry out site visits. We also share um, the responsibility. So say if one enforcement officer isn't around, then another enforcement officer uh, would pick up that site visit. And that that has been the case um, in, a, in a few other uh, in a few recent site visits. And so we have the um, it's a shared enforcement team. So we have the officers who also cover the city area and there is flexibility of deployment between the staff. OK, thank you. Uh, Councillor Bradnam, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I thank you very much uh, for that. My questions relate to uh, page 81 in the agenda. Uh, I firstly wanted to say thank you very much to the enforcement staff for actually serving the enforcement notice on land northeast of Fen Road. Um, it's actually not Chesterton, it's Milton. Uh, there is a common confusion there. There is a Fen Road Chesterton and a Fen Road Milton, and this is actually Milton that we're talking about. Uh, so please, could that be corrected in the report? Um, secondly, uh, that whilst I'm very glad the enforcement note was issued, this was on grounds of change of land use, and that could have been established I, I believe it could have been established much earlier on. It was first reported in April this year. And as a result, because in fact people were asked to report on noise disturbance it, it, the, the whole, all through the summer, 
people were diligently making recordings of noise, but actually the concern that the parish council and indeed I and Councillor Smith had was that this was actually a change of use, which was not within um, permitted uh, terms. Um, so I'm sorry that it took so long to come to that conclusion, but I'm very glad the enforcement notice has been issued. But I know Councillor Smith and I are both asking since the time duration for that enforcement notice to be enforced has actually been passed 28 days plus 28 days. We'd like to know what action's been taken on that. So I'd like a, a written response to that, if I may. Um, and the second thing is I just wanted to check um, why there were so few notices served. Is that because of lack of, uh, sorry, in the table above at table one, I wanted to know, is that because of human resources, you know, not having enough staff, or is it because the magistrates courts were not functioning at that time? I don't know. Do, do we have an answer to that? Chair, through you, um, I don't you know the answer to that. I can try and find out what I might surmise just from previous experiences that oftentimes we'll try and resolve things through negotiation rather than um, uh, going straight to serving a notice of some kind. Uh, so that may explain um, part of that, but I'll take that away, Councillor Bradnam, um, and see if I can find out an answer for you. And thank you. Can I be assured of a written answer to my previous question? Yes, I will request that it is given to you as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Carter. Thank you very much. I don't have any further speakers, I don't think, so uh, we are about to move on. But before we do so, I would uh, echo Councillor Wright's concerns that uh, this is the second meeting where we have not had an enforcement officer present um, for this uh, I would expect to see uh, an enforcement officer with us at the next meeting. Thank you that's item eight completed we are now looking at item nine appeals against planning decisions this is on page 83 onwards um, Appendix one shows the five appeals where decisions have been made, uh, all being dismissed in our favour. Any comments on this? No, Chair, no comments to make. Happy to take any questions. Right. Any questions, members? Are you happy with that then? I think that's noted them. Chair. Um, oh, sorry, Councillor Heather Williams. All right. Yeah, Councillor Williams, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it was just um, really pleased to see the the outcomes. Obviously, the appeals have been been successful. Um, I just wondered, given some of the speculation that's been about, are any of the appeals coming through um, challenging our five year land supply, or have we been able to defend our five year land supply in any of the appeals? Just so hopefully put the rumours to bed. Thank you for that. Uh, Mr Carter, do you have a view? Yes, yeah, so just bear with me one moment, Chair. My screen's just frozen, just trying to scroll down to that page. Apologies. So one of the informal hearings uh, in Sawston, um, I have looked into this, uh, Councillor Williams, uh, following, I think you're raising this issue previously. Um, the uh, the appeal statement submitted by the applicant does comment upon five land supply, but does not challenge it in, in any substance. Uh, they've just uh, raised this as an additional issue, so the council will respond to it um, at the appropriate level. But uh, no, none of those appeals as, as far as, sorry, None of those other appeals, as far as I'm aware, have raised any issues around five-year land supply. Thank you. Thank you. Do they cite a Do they cite a number at all in that one? Uh, I don't know the answer to that, Councillor Williams, but I can uh, ask for a copy of their appeal submission to be forwarded to you if you'd like to review it, or I can find out the answer and just give you the answer. <laughs> Uh, thank you both, if that's OK. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chris. All right, thank you very much. Councillor Wright. Councillor Wright, please. Yep. Thank you, Chairman. Um, my question is to Mr Carter as well. There's a, a well-known local tweeter tweeting this morning 
that our land five year land supply is 4.2 years has particular relevance today with the announcements yesterday. Um, the only way that that uh, planning application could get through is if we don't have a land five year land supply. So it is a relevant question and uh, we're all wondering where this 4.2 years comes from. That's to Mr Carter. Thank you, Chair. Uh, sorry, I haven't haven't been seeing any tweets this morning. I'm happy to, to obviously take your word for that, Councillor Wright. The, the Council's position is that it, it maintains a five year land supply as set out um, in the position statement. Um, that hasn't changed. Uh, obviously, the Council keeps that under review. Um, and if that comes up as an issue in the appeal at Sawston, um, then it would be addressed at that point. Uh, I can't uh, advise any further on that at the moment, I'm afraid. OK, thank you very much. <clears throat> I've got no more speakers on that. So we uh, noted those. Um, just a reminder that uh, the extraordinary meeting which was to be held on the 18th of December to deal with the main Bourne application um, has been um, put off until the new year. The reason for that is that uh, there's been a, a significant amendment come in from the applicant. Uh, not anything to do with our systems, fortunately. So I now declare the, so our, our next meeting will be Wednesday the 13th of January. So I now declare the meeting closed. Thank everyone for their attendance and uh, thanks to the members of the public viewing who are sort of stuck with us through the morning. And the only last thing I need to say is a Merry Christmas to you all and let's hope for a happier and healthier New Year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chair. I can come.